targeting on their final ban. They could go towards another AD carry, could of course remove the Yumi themselves. No fishy fish fish. Ooh, but we will see the instant Akali lock in. I do hope to see this in the hands of Alfari, because I do feel that so far this split, he has been the much more consistent rock between the two solo laners. And I'm just happy that they're finally going towards these assassin picks. Something that Origin said in their interviews is, Nuke Duck and Alfari have massive champion pools. They don't have the same limitations that other teams do for their solo laners, so they can continue to flex a lot of these picks like the Akalis, like the Aurelias, like the Aatroxes. It is the first time we've seen Akali pick by Origin all split, though. No Nuke Duck, no, Nuke Duck hasn't played it, Alfari hasn't played it, haven't seen it, perhaps for Patrick in the bottom lane. So it's very much a deviation from the norm. XL will go for the Silas and then the Kaiser, which we've seen rise in priority on 950. Now, typically, uh, XL will go for the Silas in the jungle. Uh, typically, throughout the split, XL have prioritized the Jarvan, but with the recent changes to Silas and him still being a very viable jungler, I feel like it's something that Cave Drop feels very comfortable on. He had an okay performance on it yesterday up against the likes of Fnatic, and when you pair that up with a very safe AD carry in the form of Kai'Sa, I feel like XL are leaving their options open right now. I like the fact that Mithy is also prioritizing the Nautilus here. Oftentimes, Kai'Sa wants to pair with the Nautilus, or she wants to make sure that the enemy doesn't get it. So Origin are kind of reading ahead of it and say, hey, if we don't grab this now, it's probably going to be taken away from us. And we really want to have a powerful bot lane that has some sort of agency or kill pressure down here. So they're going to round it out with the Tristana. So definitely a strong two versus two going into Origin's favor. Let's see if they look to play around that because the jungle pick still has not been locked in for either side. Now, XL do have the option of grabbing a support themselves. They could go for the Braum if they wanted something a little more defensive. Alternatively, they could go for the more aggressive option in the form of the Rakan. Have seen Mystique's pick up the Rakan twice already. This split has yet to win on it, but they will lock it in, and now we get into the second ban phase. Expect to see XL maybe pinching that jungle pool just a little because they already have their jungler locked in. Yeah, this should be good night to the Jarvan at least. We'll see if they then start throwing something out. At, again, another possible flex pick here. Uh, maybe the likes of the Aatrox where they could pick that for themselves and continue to flex between the Silas. But I can't imagine that they're going to give Cold the opportunity to grab the Jarvan and instead we'll try to force it on maybe a Skarner, possibly his Lee Sen. With the gang playing ban, it does suggest that first pick Aatrox could be what you were suggesting for us, Gurin. I wonder if they look to ban away the Gnar as well. It is something that Alfari has gone for, and it's a relatively safe blind. But then it's giving Origin a comfort pick in the jungle by trying to trade that for getting Expect a power pick against Alfari, which yes. could be a potential uh, strategy here, but then it has to pay off. And playing through topside isn't normally what you want to do. Uh, it is also a risk that you're picking Aatrox, and then they just put the Akali up towards the top yeah. side of the map, which we know uh, many Akali players are happy to play into. Uh, I will say, though, that one of XL's best weeks was actually when Kedor just focused on Expect, and yep. they actually tried to play through him and try to enable him. So perhaps they look to go back to that style of play. Meanwhile, we're seeing more junglers being taken off the table, and the Skana ban surprises me. Perhaps this does suggest that XL may just look to lock in their jungler right now. I do want to kind of touch on uh, playing through topside versus bot side. Yes, Expel can try to play through topside, as can Origin. You have Expect and Alfari up there. It's just there's not a lot of reason to play over there. The Dragon's down on the bot side. Rifthild has a, a, a further back spawn time. There's more summoners, more setup for bot lane, which is why you tend to see uh, teams play through their mid lane and then use that to rotate out into bottom before anyone ever thinks about looking top. There's just not enough resources up there unless it's obvious. Okay, so jumping into the second phase of picks here, we see the Karma Lee Sin remove Skana and the Gangplank. A lot of options still available. We have seen Mickey pop off on picks like the Irelia recently. Could lock that one in for themselves, but instead it's going to be XL who go towards the Jarvan, meaning that Silas is going to be in a solo lane. Well, we did talk about the jungle picks earlier and how XL have typically prioritized the Jarvan, but have more recently gone towards the Silas. I expected the Silas to be in the jungle. However, with this uh, with this Jarvan lock-in, it heavily suggests Cage will be on more of the early game jungle style of Jarvan, and then we'll get to see the Silas flexed into the Akali matchup. I mean, one of the nice things is already with the picks that Cadrill uh, has shown taking the Jarvan is that he has uh, kill pressure in pretty much all these lanes, or at least set up for it. You know, Silas can bring his own form of CC, Rakan can uh, follow up very well to the Jarvan knockup. So there's just a lot of options so far before they even reveal the last pick on Excel's team. Origin will get the Gragas for Cold and the Aatrox picked up finally. Could go to Nuke Duck or Alfari, of course. They want to try and keep that Akali away from the Silas as much as possible. You have to expect an XL here, perhaps looking towards that Rumble. It did have a lot of effect for them when uh, Expect played it last. 
and we'll see if that is what they decide to lock in. It's a lot of magic damage if they decide to commit to the rumble here with uh, Excel's composition, which is why I think that, uh, yeah, okay, that makes a lot more sense. I think that they really needed a stronger AD champion, so I like the Renekton look. Uh, it looks like that they've got the Silas matchup into the Akali, they have the Renekton into the Aatrox, they have in my opinion, a more impactful, very early level jungler. So XL have a lot of options around the top side of the map to try and get mid and top lane ahead if they want to. However, the all-in power of Origins duo uh, does give them a lot of options around the level three mark to try and force those all-in trades. So I'm curious as to whether or not OG will look to try and track Kadrill and what he tries to set up in the early game and mitigate his early pressure, or if uh, Cold will focus on a, uh, abandoning his solo laners and instead trying to leverage the strong 2v2 that Patrick I'm actually leaning towards this idea of a control jungle style for Cold here, because if you look at the outscale potential in a 1-3-1 when you have the likes of an Akali and an Aatrox, I think Origins say, hey, if we neutralize what Excel can get done into the early game, in the late game, we're going to feel more than comfortable on how we play out the rest of this map with these two solo picks. I do feel that scaling is actually relatively close on both sides. When we look at both AD carries, we look at both solo laners. Uh, it's definitely going to be an interesting one for sure. And I'm fascinated to see what direction both junglers take. Either way, a lot is on the line for this game between these two teams. Uh, and we'll see if Origin can turn around their poor performance from yesterday. After seeing Rogue win in the last game, Origin need to pick up victories here. They can't leave it to the final week to secure their spot in playoffs. Excel, their hopes are still alive, but it's a long road for them. We'll see if they can survive. We'll see if they can make it as we jump on into our third game of the day. Esports, la 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 la. Fa la 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 la. Oh, fa la 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 la. That feels too Christmassy for me. <laughs> You're literally English and you messed that up. <laughs> okay, sure. I'll, I'll take it on the chin. I'll take it on the chin. Origin versus XL. A game that is decisive in both these teams' playoff runs. And I want to know where you guys want to focus early on. What are we expecting? Uh, you talked about Cold wanting a more controlled jungle style. How does he enact that? Uh, well, it starts with early game vision and making sure that you can track where the enemy junglers are going to start. Actually, what I was looking at when we popped into the game was checking in on keystones, the fact that Patrick went for the press the attack as well as expect going for the press the attack, and Alfari having the graphs rather than something like the electrocute. So obviously, Aatrox specking for more of the defensive, hoping that he'll be able to proc the grass so he can keep up with the sustain, also have his own inbuilt sustain, or as expect is really going for a very aggressive um, Renekton keystone, trying to make sure that he gets that combo, is able to proc the press the attack. Yeah, uh, I feel like it, that it makes sense with what we expected to come in in terms of the early game, given that we want to see Kedro play around his two solo laners. And so, as we often do, we like to track the early game pathing of both these junglers. Kedro starting up towards the top side. When you go for an early red, it does give you the option of going red into a potential level two gank. But it looks like for now that given that he's gone to his Krugs, Kedro could be looking for a full top side clear. And I do want to point out the clever ward from Origin because they are facing a Jarvan. You can see it's right right outside the Baron pit, and that's to check for Jarvan to go buff to buff when he exactly, uses yep. his flag and drag over the wall. Now, this Krug clear means that the Krugs will respawn around 430, 420, depending on when he actually clears it. And what that can open up for is around the five minute mark, there's a potential that Cadrill could look for a gank on this top line play. So as we look towards this Renekton, he's looking for a gank now, but will also have the potential at around five minutes in this game. A really good spot out there for us. The early vision setup from Origin, very prepared for a potential early gameplay from Kadrill. And like we set a lot of it up. We talked about the keystones, we talked about the early passing from Kadrill. It just feels like Origin have read the playbook beautifully. In the meantime, Cold, he's done a very typical Gragas clear, full uh, clear towards the bot side of the map. Looks like he's going to clear his entire top side as well. So this will delay his early predator, but that's fine because he's not looking for an early gank. Uh, so for the meantime, he's just going to go for that level four. Uh, and be a happy champion. Yeah, both the junglers just rotating through their jungle for the moment. There's a scuttle crab up here for Kajal in just a second if he wants to try and get that top side control, but could even look for the gank top. Alfari yeah, and Expect have been trading quite a lot. Expect has his flash available. Oh, looking for no. the Reaper's Predator's stun, and here comes Kajal. Alfari maybe overstepped. Kajal looking forward. The flash wave, the flash chase. That's how you EQ flash. Kajal finds his man, and the chase is in first blood excels. 
So first things first, exceptionally well executed mechanically from Cadrill to get the flash and still find the knockup right there. I said, oh no, because Cole just hit the Scryer's Bloom and didn't catch Cadrill. Ships passing in the night. This Jarvan just got underneath where Althari thought he was safe. Yep, it was, it was very unfortunate timing. And for the most part, I feel Cold felt that he was safe. Ooh, as we see a bit of pressure being set at mid, I feel like Cold thought, uh, Alfari thought that he was safe because he could see that Cold was pathing up towards the top side of the map and he was going to move in to grab that scuttle. Uh, he was not expecting Cadrill to then make that path up through the river and then come in through the lane. So they end up catching Alfari off guard. XL able to get their top laner ahead very early on and we can already see very early on uh, this Grievous Wounds application sort of avarice picked up from Expect. Execution is calling there on Expect. The fight now begins in the bottom lane and Mystique's just going to try and dodge away from this one as Cold was waiting in the wings to get into the fight. XL able to keep the Origin members at bay for now. I'd say, what year is it, Vettius? Yeah. Is it Avarice Blade? Is it Executioner's Calling? Where's my go for five? Yeah. <laughs> But again, we uh, called out the potential for a top lane gank around five minutes for the Jarvan. Jarvan should finish out his camps on bot side. His Krugs will be responding soon. So on the next reset for Cadrill, and because uh, Renekton has the Avarice... No, I'm doing it. The Executioner's calling to compete with uh, the sustain that Alfari's going to have there. Uh, he wants to make sure that he can get that wave shoved in to get it into a bounce to hope to set up that potential gank. There's the Krug cam respawn. So Cadrill should, I assume, reset. Maybe he walks towards it. This is greedy. Go for a walkabout. And you've called it so far, Fosk. We'll see if uh, Cadrill agrees with your read on the play. He is stepping up towards he's, that top side for now. I think also protecting Silas exactly. here. Exactly. Yep. I think he's only here for protection for the time being. Uh, he wants to make sure that Mickey can push this wave in. Uh, I don't know if Mickey necessarily wants to back, but he definitely wants to bounce back from the wave. And having the support from Cadrill is very valuable. They're likely not going to look for a dive given the level six have not been hit. Unless they, they dive top however, lane. However, look to dive top lane. That's a big wave here. Six minions or so. Alfari is going to try and clear that out, but Excel are here. Three men strong. Alfari trying to defend. Doesn't have the flash. Here's Cajal. Gets the knocker. Mickey on the chase. That's gone. Locked up. Easy enough stuff for Excel. Great call for us. Amazing adjustment from Cajal right there. He's like, I can force this game to happen. And because we have mid lane priority with Mickey, I can bring someone along for the ride. Forethought there. Beautifully done. Oh, oh, now they've got Nuke Duck. Super greedy from Nuke Duck. He almost falls. There was no ignite, it was just the Grievous Wounds for this. Oh, oh yes! <laughs> that was so fine, Mickey! Beautifully played from XL. They find three quick kills before we're even at the six minute mark. And it's all around these three players in the top half of the map. We talked about it in draft. We talked about how Kedra wanted to get them ahead. And so far, he's done a fine job of it. Origin falling behind in the early game. Do you think he needs to be a bit more respectful here? His mid laner's not there. Mickey doesn't have TP. Yeah, this is why Cage was like probably over forcing here as Alfari just walks from the mid lane and helps Cold secure this area. It is something that we often see from XL. Uh, we saw it a lot yesterday in their game versus Fnatic where they'd get these advantages uh, and then they would overstep. Um, we'll see if they can clean that up in this game, but have a look at this. You talk all about it, Frost. We saw him, we expected him to reset after clearing the bot side of the map, but he knew that he could cover mid and then use that priority to rotate up towards top side. And they set up that dive as Mickey, uh, sorry, expect was setting up the slow push. And this is just why we praise Kajal so well, because he is such an incredibly smart jungler. Do you want to shout out Mickey right there from the three point line? Just absolutely nothing but Yeet. net. <laughs> Straight in the back, uh, the back of the net. Uh, yeah, I want to bring attention to Mickey over the last three weeks or so. He has had some stellar performances. His Aurelia gameplay has been on, uh, on top form. And he's just been playing incredibly well for this XL lineup. I think that Mickey was just going to be kind of a ticking time bomb for XL. Obviously, some of the growing, pain, uh, growing pains, teething pains, as he was new to the roster trying to find that synergy. And it was kind of only a matter of time. So XL were unfortunate they were put from the back foot that other teams had, you know, two and a half months of uh, practice with their mid laner. Well, that's right. Used here by Nuke Doug. Mickey won't be able to dodge away. The lockup is good. Cold finds the first kill of the game for Origin. As I say that, he dies. Yeah. Clean kill from the side of Origin. They finally get themselves on the board. Uh, we're now keeping our eyes on where the jungler is making his way. Looks like they're pathing towards bot. They could consider an early Drake, given that they do have the push in the two versus two, but instead they decide not to risk it. Yeah, I actually think they're being really cautious with this. Maybe lost track of some of the teleport timers. 
but you see that XL don't have any TP, so there's just a lot of priority there for Origin, but don't try to push their luck. Yeah, uh, I think they're a little concerned because a lot of their damage disappears given that Nuke Duck didn't have his ultimate available. Uh, we do see the Jarvan hanging around the bot side of the map, um, but this also allows Nuketuk to actually go back to base. So he can now spend that gold, pick up a Vamp Scepter as well. Uh, and so when he returns to the map, they're in a much better position. But this is scary because Origin decided that they didn't want to try to force. It was a very bold call if they went for the Infernal. They now take their resets. They're also missing their teleports. So that they're at a numbers disadvantage. And Excel are able to walk up to this Infernal for free. I feel like Origin had their window a bit risky, but they play it too cautious and lose the Infernal Drake in response. And that feels like it's been the story of the split for Origin, just not taking those 60-40 plays, waiting for the 80-20 plays. And because of it, they lose out on some of these advantages that they can be building early on in the game. Well, I feel like that Origin is a team that when they're playing from behind, they just don't take risks. Uh, and in this situation, while there was a potential risk, as Frosk said, um, that was a great opportunity for them to make that play, and they just did not choose to take it. And we'll see how the rest of the game plays out, but so far it feels that XL have been the team that has been in full control. They've been dictating the pace. They found a lot of early game kills, but the gold is still very even. A lot of that is coming from the mid lane discrepancy, along with the top lane discrepancy in terms of farm. Now, x does have that wave that he's going to catch and close that gap a little bit. You can see that the mid lane gold is still even because of that kill that he was able to pick up. And the gold is actually the difference it's largely coming from the bot lane for Mithy and Patrick, who've been doing what they can to keep up the pressure uh, and generate that extra bit of gold. Yeah, and also grabbing a few plates there as uh, true, yeah. Excel were resetting after taking that Infernal. So Origin did get something back for it in the end. You can now see Gragas waiting the wings. And the hook's gonna land, quickness comes out, there's the barrel, easy so enough good. stuff. Really well played by Origin as they try and take down the six in the end, but Expect is here in time to save his support. And Origin, they find another kill. This early game looked disastrous, but Cold is doing a good job of playing around where he has pressure. He set up a good kill into mid, the push was available in bot, and he found it, and now he has his eyes set on Mickey once again. Kader was hoping that Cold would go in there, just waiting by the tower, couldn't quite find the connection. Yeah, and just smart for Cold to be here looking for the potential of the counter gank. He should now move with Nuke Duck into this topside river, not only to protect Alfari here grabbing some plates, but also because he has his topside camp set up. And it looks like Excel are going to go for a lane swap as they bring Jeskla and Mystiques up towards the top side. Patrick and Mithy had just backed and they were heading towards mid. Now they'll say, okay, we know where Excel's bottom lane are. We're going to follow them. And they'll go straight up towards top. Alfari TPing down towards the bottom lane. Knew that Expected burnt his TP before. TP before and actually manages to save a plate down towards this bottom side. Yeah, but he uses that TP, like you're saying, to kind of dissuade and pick up the free farm that was pushing into the tower, but he didn't find his back. So I'm actually curious if he's just that far away from an item and he's like, I can't use this TP to grab free priority. Instead, I just need to grab it to pick up some, some basic farm, um, but that could slow them down if they want to make a different reset later on. Look at the pings coming out from XL. <clears throat> They can see that Cold is sitting in the bot side of the jungle right now. They expect the Origin will be playing up towards the top side, and Rift Tower will likely be the next big objective. The problem is, right now, all the sweepers are on cooldown. They have no control wards in their inventory, so it's actually very difficult for them to set up for this objective. So they need to disengage. They need to get out of this situation, consider a potential reset, uh, in order to properly set up for this objective. I think at this position, instead of trying to force uh, through walking into River, the teams need to decide where they're going to grab priority, whether that be through the top side of the map or the middle of the map. And then once they have the priority there, use that as the pivot point to rotate up into River. So Origin did it through the top side of the map. They hard shoved it in, and then they were able to pull their bot lane down into the River to gain access and control. Excel were just too slow to making that decision of where they were going to try to attack, mid or top. I do feel like it was a good punish from Origin because you can see how as Kedril and uh, his duo did were sitting in the river first, they ended up not doing anything with it. So the fact that Origin can then follow up, as Frosk was saying, by generating that pressure up towards the top side and now getting a better reset off, uh, Origin overall just better utilizing their fundamentals. And notice how they have now actually been able to claw a gold advantage. And it's one of those situations where Nuketuk should be fine here, but it's one of those situations where we talked about it earlier on. Nuketuk goes in! Have the execution used. Looking at the trade here onto Mickey. Mickey steals away the ult as well. Cold's on his way. Kedro coming down from the top side, and Nuke Duck will just clear out the wave with that ult. Okay. So Nuke Duck interrupting my point just to be flashy there, but all right, we'll take that. Or did just need to stall this and dissuade them while they're waiting for Alfari to actually threaten the bot lane? Obviously, you don't want to give away the Rift Herald, but this is taking a lot of time for Excel to actually do this objective where Origin can still get a lot on the map. Mickey doesn't want to burn that TP to defend the bot lane tower either because he knows 
Origin might need, uh, might go for a fight around us. He wants to be able to get there. Cold looking for the steal. The barrel goes in, but Rift Hold goes down for XL. So this is actually really calculated from Origin because if you check their summoner spells, does Nuke Duck have TP? Yeah, he yeah, does. He so does. It, it wasn't on cooldown. So they're actively saying we could pull a Kali in here. She was back. She was ready to be in a position. But we're fine giving them the Rift Tail because of what we can get top and bottom for Tristana and Aatrox. But she also lost her ultimate in the trade in mid lane as well. So I feel like from a power position, Origin weren't prepared to make that fight. But also, as you rightly said, XL brought Expect up. So XL are also looking at this situation saying, you know what? We'll make the commitment in order to gain some plates and pressure mid. Um, they throw it mid. I didn't actually catch if anyone did the Renekton catch I, the plate I gold. I think Expect was close enough, but we'll wait to see when our stats update us. All right, so they did end up playing for plates and I feel like they could have better utilized it um, given how many resources they invested into it um, but regardless that was the decision they made and it feels like to me Origin came out on top. Hold caught out in the kites and more flash away. Still on the chase. Cold doesn't really have anywhere to go. We'll put the barrel down but expects on the right side of that shutdown. Cold caught out. And this is good stuff for XL. We talk about mistakes, and that was a big one from Cold. He does not reset with the rest of his team, and this is where XL had control. They catch him out of position, they find a quick kill, and now they're setting up for the Infernal, but can Origin look to contest? Uh, Nukeduck is here, upset and Mythia in the mid lane, but Nukeduck in a 1v3 I don't think is the easiest thing in the world. That tower almost fallen in the bottom lane. Nukeduck just needed to hit it one more time, but... For the moment, he won't be able to do that. Top goes down first, and Origin will get two towers in quick succession. So where Origin have either made mistakes or made the choice to give away some sort, um, some of the monster objectives, they're instead trading it again for power on their specific carry. So in this case, it's the Aatrox, it's the Akali again, it's the Tristana, and that's why they're still sitting very comfortably in the gold lead here. See the amount of gold earned from the place. Looks like Expect wasn't in range for that, Betty. It's 1,100 to just... 160 gold from XL. And now Alfari is going to use the fact that he doesn't need to push straight into a tower in the top lane to come down and try and steal away some of Kadra's jungle. Nuke Duck stepping in here as well. Kadra's going to start losing out on some of these jungle camps pretty soon. Now Nuke Duck does have the gunblade completed, so Mickey has to show a lot more respect in this matchup because we've seen quite a few times now that even though many pros consider Silas to be a solid matchup, and some used to consider it a counter to Akali, uh, given that she picks up Conqueror, it gives her a lot more dueling power. And once you've got this first item, you have a lot of kill threat. Definitely does need to be careful though. So I like the back coming in from Nuke Duck simply because Cold is a top side. So Nuke Duck is playing weak side of the map in terms of numbers uh, advantage there for Excel. So rightfully just takes the wave, threatens Silas off of maybe one or two minions, then resets his position. So I want to have a look back at some of the things we talked about and the expectations we set in picks and bans. We said we wanted Cold to play this sort of control style jungle. After those early flurry of kills from XL, he seems to have been pretty good at understanding where XL would be. We said that XL would want to look for some of these early kills, especially to expect who's run this press the attack. How do you feel this game uh, is going in terms of both teams' expectations? Well, I feel like Excel did manage to get some of the early gold onto their carries, but I don't personally feel that it was enough to really springboard them. You can see that reflected in the gold. And again, that was Origin very cleverly trading uh, monster objectives like the Herald, like the two dragons, for individual gold on things like the Tristana, the Akali, and the uh, Aatrox, which is why they're able to play this 1-3-1 style here. Bring this used by Mystique. Oh. He is caught out. Cold was waiting. Silent Assassin just waiting around the wings now. Mickey steals away the Nautilus ultimate. Nuke Duck has teleported into this alongside Mickey and Origin will just be dissuaded from going any further for the fight. I am quite surprised XL tried to force that fight. The reality is what would they gain off the back of if they even won it? Securing that mid tower would have been very difficult, especially when Alfari had priority top and could have just rotated down to compensate for the numbers difference. So it felt to me like XL had a bit of a communication blunder there as they tried to force this play. And we can also kind of talk about uh, some of the wider abilities of this composition from Origin if they are set up with Aatrox and Akali into these side lanes. And it's not only the ability to make kind of counter picks like this, but imagine trying to engage on that three. You have a Tristana and a Gragas, two champions with probably some of the biggest disengages in the game. So as this game goes later and later, and as Nuke Duck and Alfari continue to get gold, it's really hard to punish Patrick and Mithy. Mithy taking a lot of damage here. Mystique's there just in time, but the perfect execution from Nuke Duck is enough. And now Mystique is running for his life. Shuriken hits, Cold takes him out. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, there's another fight erupting as Patrick has been caught out by Jessica. The shutdown comes out, there's Cataclysm as well, but Cold is on his way. Stop watch, and the game goes sepia for a second 
We'll see exactly what happened there in just a moment's time. So I had a look back because um, what surprised me was the fact that the Nautilus ult did not... <laughs> if I'm in this trio, you can only cut my name one way. So the problem with having Frost gear in as a, uh, as a gamer tag... Yeah, Medi Vedi Urin doesn't sound good. You right. can <laughs> only cut the Frost. You don't want the Urin. Oh, no. All right, this is why we don't go off topic. We have not been trained for this, right? This is an LCK special. Only they know Whoa. how to do this properly. In the LPL, we were born in pauses. Okay, <laughs> we had true. the LPL pot. Oh, yes! Okay, we're back in game. <laughs> Woo! Thank Okay, thank you everything. Tekken Mickey decided not to fight. Good stuff. Now, guys, 3,000 gold lead for Origin. They have those two towers to nil, two dragons sitting on the side of Excel. And we see now Alfari stepping into Kedril's jungle. Expect is just up towards the top side of this fight. If it does erupt, then he could come and join, but Alfari would just put in the ward and then back away. So right now we're in a situation where, again, do Origin actually want to pull the trigger on forcing down this mid lane tower, or they find to keep it up and to continue farming? There's no uh, dragon to play around. Spawning, I'm trying to quickly keep track of timers. One minute 20, so we have probably about a 30 second window before teams start setting up their vision down here. So what I thought was quite interesting was if we could quickly pan down to Nuke Duck, he set up a, almost like a freeze on the wave where he waited. And the reason why he waited is because he wanted the mid wave to crash at the same time. So this suggests to Mickey that he's actually looking for a row mid, but he's actually looking for the 1v1. Gone by Juice with the first five point strike doesn't hit. Nuke Duck looking for the trade here onto Mickey. Lance the Shuriken going all the way in. Mickey has to flash away and Nuke Duck will dash away with his pe a perfect execution. And obviously anytime you're facing an assassin when you don't have flash, the assassin knows that that's a kill next time. So uh, Mickey unfortunately has to be that much more terrified of Nuke Duck in these side lanes. But that was really big brain from Nuke Tech. Like you could see what Mickey was thinking and he wasn't prepared for this play. Almost finds a kill, but Nuke Duck only ends up walking away with the flash. Now, because two members were up topside, this forces Alfari back because Patrick was hanging around the mid lane and I believe Cold was hanging towards bot. Oh. But now they're looking for the fight. Nuke Duck is basing, does not have the teleport. But Excel are actually really behind on this play. Dragon's going to be spawning in 19 seconds. You can see it's about to pop up. Origin have dabbled in placing some vision down here, but the fact that Excel are making their backs now would have to walk all the way across the map and Origin will have priority over mid lane. They can pick. We can force into mid, we can lay down uh, vision on the top side, we can look for a pick, or we can do the dragon. They have a wealth of options. It is only the Ocean Dragon that's coming up, so 20 minutes into the game doesn't have as much impact as it would in the early game, but it is Origin who have, as you say, the advantage in terms of where they're positioned on the map and when their reset timers were, so they should be able to secure it pretty easy. I think this makes sense from Excel. Trade the Drake for the tower. They will likely be able to push in this mid wave as well, or they could even consider going for the top tier one, but the risk of that is that you trade it for pressure on the mid lane, which allows Origin to threaten this mid tier one and if they get that tower it opens up baron options yeah that's the scary thing once you push that down it makes it that much easier to run into the enemy jungle to get the famous triangle vision that vedius loves to use the oracle lens tool to point out and secure the the baron and choke it out I do love my triangle vision. It's all about denying the enemy jungle vision and forcing the enemy into making a choice. Do we face check and run the risk of fighting or do we run the risk of losing the Baron? The best way to set up the Baron once you have a lead and right now that is the position that Origin find themselves in. But we had the TP used from Patrick so they're going to get priority over the mid lane and again it's Origin with a wealth of options and they're looking at picking Mickey. What are you doing? He's way too pushed up. Tries to jump away, steals away the Nautilus Ottoman, tries straight back onto Patrick. There goes the dredge line. Look at the damage. Oh, he goes down. Cold oh. pushing in. Those straight onto Jessica. And now Mystique's here in time. The quickness coming out. Nuke Duck doing the jump across the wall. Cold goes gold for the second. Jessica now has to pop a subwatch of his own. But he might just pop straight up to us. Oh, Nuke Duck mistimes it. And because of that, he does not take down the AD carry. It looks like Origin are only going to walk away with a single kill for now, as Expect does join the fight. Ends up being one for zero, but nothing really gained off the back of it. Yes, Mickey was out of position, but OG, they messed up the execution there a little bit. He almost got away with his life, which ultimately forced Cole to flash in to secure that kill. Oh, I mean, it was funny. Origin weren't even there for Mickey. They were there for the mid lane tower and the mid priority, but Mickey was just a bonus. But this is what surprises me because Origin, it feels like, haven't actually been threatening the tower at all. Every time they push in the wave, they actually walk away from it. It's like that they were too afraid to approach the objective. And this surprises me because with the position and map pressure that they have set up, XL's resources should be pretty divided. So the fact that uh, Origin are able to get this push and have the numbers to threaten the tower as well, yet they don't utilize it, I think kind of reinforces this idea that Origin are very much about 
playing slow, playing patient, and really just avoiding all risk. And then reminded of the stakes of this game. So that already plays into Origin's very patient, very conservative play style. You can only think of the pressure on this game. No mistakes here. You have to win it. Mickey still trying to trade with Nuketuck at every opportunity. Nuketuck doesn't have the ult. Mickey will steal it away. Looking for that trade. Perfect, perfect execution is available. He jumps forward. Should be pretty easy here for Mickey to clean this one up. Nuketuck trying to dodge as much as he can, but Mickey gets the shutdown. Nuketuck not having the ult spelled his demise. Yeah, I thought that Nuketuck would be able to punish Mickey without the flash. Mickey just runs it right back at Nuketuck and slams him. That said, in the time that it took to kill Nuketuck, Origin finally pushed down that mid tower, which means Baron can be in play, but here's a TP. Yeah, XO just forcing this. You have to do it. You know Nuketuck's not up. He's got the teleport when he comes back up, but the Baron down to 11,000 HP. Just got backing away. Has TP to join this fight. Now Origin going to try and fight for it. Baron down, lower and lower. Origin stepping forward, looking for the fight. It's slow. an HP on it, it's so slow, but now Jessica's here. The barrel comes out, Mystique's pushed straight in, but Patrick gets to jump away with input buffering. And now XL trying to turn on Alfari, but Origin could just turn him back. Flash, dredge line, expect on the front line. Alfari shut down, and now with Cadrill going gold, and he'll survive for Nuke the moment. Duck. Patrick there, Nuketuck coming in. This could be it! Oh! G, get the fight they want. Patrick gets a double, make it a triple on the back. Mickey trying to do what he can by taking down Cole, but the turnaround is there. Mickey jumping forward, doesn't land the chains, lands the Elskon. Cadrill takes out Cold in the end, and Nuketuck fell as well. It actually ends up being a surprisingly even fight. It was XL that tried to force this Baron. Notice again, they find that pick onto Akali and realize, right, we can force this play. If nothing else, we can turn for a fight. But that ultimate actually interrupts the EQ combo from Cadrill, so that initial engage is not available. This means they're actually on the retreat in the second half of this fight. And the thing is, is again, the Baron took so long that Origin were able to get into position, and then with the deep teleport here from Nuketuck, that is the go-ahead for Origin to expend everything, the flash forward even from Patrick here. But then you have to keep your eyes on what Mickey does. One versus four, he ends up finding so many kills, taking out the Akali, finding the secure onto Cold as well. The fact that he had so much health at the initial part of that fight and was then able to turn it around and get all his AoE damage off was a large part of why that fight was so close in the end. Taking count of the summoner spells, kind of the big winner is the fact that Mickey actually still has access to TP. The only one there, but I'll hold it as another fight. A fire pops the world end and Mystique's looking for the flank potential here. It's expect coming in from the top side as well. Mystique's with the quickness, stunned up, rooted up. Can't even land a single charm. Alfari gets on the back line and there comes the cart. Straight to the face of the Ricard, but it's stolen away. And Nuketuck jumps in the Twilight Shroud. We'll keep him alive. They're the Mickey trying to trade. They're split to two sides and Excel will be fed to the wolves. The shutdowns rain down. Origin take three. And you can see Mystique's having a real bad time when he's looking across from Gragas and Nautilus. He did not get to interact with that fight at all. Just bounced around with multiple layers of CC. And Origin now have all five members alive. They're going to quickly push in the mid wave and make their way straight towards the Baron. They don't care about the second mountain. They do not care about anything else. They just want to get this buff. Yeah, no, Althari denied the Blast Cone from Cajal. He'd have to use the EQ combo in if he wants to get into the pit, doesn't have Flash, about to come off of cooldown. Nuketuck has the perfect execution to try and hamper this from happening. Alfari stepping on that front line, 6,000 HP on the Baron Origin, looking to secure it, but Kajal can make the hero play for his team here. Keep their playoff hopes alive. Jessica's the one to step forward. Nuketuck uses the first perfect execution. Here comes Kajal going forward. The Inferno Chains are on him. He needs to get in there. He needs to get in there now because Nuketuck is raining hell upon Jester. Mystique's going to fall as well. Let's go for the pit. He goes, Kajal. He goes for the Baron. The Cataclysm goes out, but he's done. And now Origin will secure it. They will take your lives. They'll take the Baron. And they'll look to take this game. Origin walk away with all five members alive and a Baron in their back pocket. And this is the fight that started it all. Keep your eyes on the minimap. Mystiques was setting up for the flank. XL were going for this collapse while Akali wasn't there. But the flank is the thing that gets collapsed upon. XL immediately find themselves in a four versus five. And while the stolen Gragas ultimate looks good initially, all it ends up doing is splitting XL apart. Two versus five, there is little that Mickey and Expect can do, which allows OG to to kick off the Baron. And time and time again, it's Excel trying to shoot from the hip, trying to be reactionary, not thinking that far ahead, but Origin, big brain. They don't think 30 seconds ahead, they think a whole minute and a half ahead. They're able to constantly find the uh, win on the back half of the plays. They've built up the gold. They now have all the power where they want it, and now they have the Baron. A, a flurry of fights here. You can see Cajal almost got there in time. 1,500 HP left on that Baron. Mystique's looking for the charm, looking for the quickness, can't quite land it. Nuketuck has his ultimate stolen away. He's stunned in place, red turret destroyed in the mid laners. The rest of Urgent pushing, and look how long Nuketuck has delayed this for. 
He continues to survive. Look Mickey looking for the apps gone, but the inhibitor the tower is the target for the mid lane. Nuke Duck almost has his perfect execution back up. He goes golden for a second. Can he get that timer up? Inhibitor tower falls to the mid lane as Arch continues to look for the push. In the end, Nuke Duck falls, but XL pay for it with an inhibitor. Possibly even more. They can very easily walk to Alfari if they want. Maybe they're not feeling themselves. Nuke Duck doesn't have access to TP. 40 seconds on his death timer. They can also reset. Mickey, don't get caught again. I think Mickey's getting it caught again. Eyes on Mithy. Ooh, good slow there coming out from Mickey. No flash available on Mithy means that they cannot look to commit. is actually staying in the top lane, while the rest of Excel are actually looking yeah. to challenge for this mountain, Drake. Remember, the Elder is a still a potential win condition for um, XL, and given that they already have two Drakes on the board, if they find themselves a third, it's there a is this comeback potential. But here comes Origin. The flank from Aatrox is coming. Alfari on his way down. XL maybe walked into a trap. Admiral, Admiral, oh dear, I can't say the words. Oh, stolen, XL take it. That was impressive. Now they need stumbled, to... but XL did not in the moment. Now they need to walk to safety, but meanwhile, Origin are going to go ahead and prep the wave bot lane. There's still an outer tower there on the bot side. It's going to be the easiest tower for them to actually approach and to take, and they're starting to make their moves that way. OG with the Baron. They have extended their gold lead to about 8.5k now, and they still have a minute left, so this is plenty of time to secure a couple more objectives. Now that Nuke Duck has caught up with the rest of his team, he's likely going to push in mid, and then you would imagine that he groups up bot. But something that we often do see Origin do is a 2-0-3 setup, where you send both your split pushes into a single lane to generate a lot more pressure. Uh, often when only one member comes to answer, that one person could not often find themselves there. And you can see how quickly Origin take towers here with Patrick being well and truly online. Three items on the Tristana, only scaling up, getting that longer range auto attack as well. Almost level 16, almost the longest range in the game. It's gonna be very hard for XL to defend against Patrick when he can just step up the towers and take them out in a heartbeat. Yeah, and the unfortunate reality is that when he does, the only option XL have is to either find a flank or find a hard engage because they don't have innate wave clear built on their composition. Majority of them are melee champions and then it's just a Kaisa as your marksman, who's relatively short range. Expect popping the Dominus here, trying to chase down Nuke Duck, but he's in a 2v1. Mystique's on his way. Expect will pop the stopwatch and keep himself alive in the fight. The inhibitor tower did fall, but the inhibitor didn't. And because Patrick and Mithy had backed away and reset, Origin weren't able to get anything on the other side of the map. So that was a good example of the 2-0-3 we were talking about. There was already the uh, inhibitor down, which made it very easy for Nuke Duck to rotate up and actually secure that tower. Now, a lot of the base is broken for XL. Uh, unfortunately, their back timers are a little bit desynchronized. You can see Alfari only just now being able to base. This means that Cold, Patrick, and Mithy have to be careful. Um, oh, they're actually choosing to reset once again. This could very well be to restock on some of the vision, as you would imagine that Baron will be the next big objective that they're waiting for. Yeah, and it was kind of the question of if they didn't make their backs there or maybe force some teleports, they're trying to press more towers. But I agree with you, Vetti. I think they're, again, taking a more conservative route and saying, grab the free gold, make sure that the waves are constantly pressuring, and let's look towards the next big objective, whether that be the Drake or the uh, the Baron. We'll see what Origin send their eyes to. They have a 10,000 gold lead, 30 minutes in. That snowballed in the last five minutes or so. Eight towers to one. Excel. very few threads of hope left for them in this game. The Elder Dragon may be one, but we still have an Inferno to get through before then. We've still got the Baron fight that's going to happen in a minute or so's time. And Origin, it's all of their vision. If we pan to the vision, just looking at how little XL have anywhere up forward in the map. They've got a little bit in their own jungle, but there's nothing past the halfway mark. I do want to say that there is a deep control ward from Excel behind Patrick. There is a teleport on Expect. If you want to see maybe the hero play, Expect has to get to safety, but they could look for that. I think the risk is, though, if they commit to that, then they're just leaving the top side of the map open for oh. OG to just run it down, right? And uh, it's, it's a potential in terms of XL maybe turning it around, but the risk, the debate is, is it worth the reward? And Not in this current map right state. now. With it Patrick doesn't... shoving by. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it looks like Origin are going to continue to push in all three waves. The Baron spawns in about 25 seconds. Uh, XL are just being slowly starved out of their own jungle. This is where we get to see that triangle vision being set up, where Origin just suffocate XL out from the top side of the map. XL on their last legs in this defense. Kedor had to EQ away. 
You can see how much damage Patrick does if he can just get a couple of water attacks down with the red buff as well. Infernal Chase doesn't land from Alfari, but the rest of Origin are here for the chase. They're looking for that inhibitor. Again, why even risk the Baron at this point when you have such great disengage tools from the Tristana, from the Gragas, and the range? Uh, you can try your luck and you can chip away at this inhib tower without the possibility of a 50 50 Baron or a Baron fight that can swing a game. I actually really Jets like one. this call. Caught out. Alfari might take it, but Jessica with a perfect dodge with the killer instinct there, and now the fight will have up to expect tries to get on the back line. Look at how low Alfari is. He's stunned up. He'll get taken down, but he's still got a GA. Jessica has to flash away. Patrick already taken down one. Mystiques will be short to follow. Nuke Duck takes him, and Expectus is trying to take out the support. Mickey against Nuke Duck down towards the bottom side of the fight. Oh, perfect stopwatch there by Nuke Duck. The GA popped on Expectus all on Jessica. He has to try and do something. But Cold goes golden for the second. Mickey trying to get away from this as Alfari is on the chase on the top side. Nuke Duck flashes away. Look at that, though, Jessica. Hit with the body slam. Cold find his mark. And now Arjuna just cleaned up the fight. It's too easy for them. XL for the pieces. That was a very close fight still, but it was not enough from XL. Origin still have all five members alive, and I don't think Mickey is going to be enough to keep this game going. At the end of a 30-minute slog, Origin proved they still deserve that spot in playoffs. They proved they are going to continue to fight to the very last, and we'll see how they match up against Rogue next week. One game at a time. That's what Origin keeps saying. They're not looking ahead towards playoffs. They're not looking ahead towards uh, lifting the LEC trophy. They're saying take every single game as it comes. Yep. Playing very patient, very conservative League of Legends. I agree. Uh, I think that right now this is the best mentality that Origin can hope for. Uh, we saw a, a very conservative playstyle. I think yeah. it's fair to say. Um, while I think it was required in the early game, in the mid game, I think there were plenty of opportunities for them to push their advantage a little bit more, uh, take a couple of riskier calls and threaten a couple more objectives. Uh, but in the end, they got the big win and they punished XL whenever they saw the opportunity. I agree with you. I do want to credit, though, the fact that Origin are reaching and trying to play with their expansive champion pools, flexing Alfari and Nuke Duck's muscles here. I like the fact that Cold is giving us more early game action as well as his typical controlled style. So it feels like the next evolution as Origin have found their stride, know how they want to attack the game. Commiserations, of course, to XL, who are knocked out of playoff contention with that loss, uh, I believe. Yeah, they can't catch Origin, who are now on seven wins. They only have four wins for themselves with two games left to play. So XL knocked out. It is a shame, but uh, we'll see them back next split. I think as the split developed, they showed us a lot of very promising signs. It's just that I think Frost, you described it best. They think 30 seconds ahead, they don't think a couple of minutes ahead. And sometimes that's just a bit of veterancy that you need on the team. And I think uh, experience is a very young roster, very new uh, collection. They didn't have a lot of time that other teams did to build the synergy. I know everyone's going to gravitate towards Kadril. We've sung his praises enough. I want to focus in on some of the other key members here. For me, Jessica and Mystiques really were uh, a strong and comparable bot lane. I think that they are probably above middle of the pack in terms of 2v2s. I was quite uh, impressed with Mystiques in particular. And I hope to continue to see them in the LEC and their growth. All right, if you were impressed by some of the Origin players this game, you can jump on over to Twitter at LOL Esports and vote in our Kia player of the game. Vote Cold, Nuke Duck, and Patrick are your options. Personally, I love to see Nuke Duck on an Assassin. It was great fun. We haven't seen him on Akali at all this split, and I think he had a stellar performance. Uh, well, in my opinion, he was probably the worst performing player on the side of Origin. I feel like I just that... like kills. <laughs> he got a lot of kills that were cool. Uh, I think you only had two minutes. <laughs> he played Kali, did a lot of flips. Uh, yes, he certainly did do a lot of flips. I think that uh, a lot of this game, in my opinion, came down to a lot of the pressure that they generated on sides. Yeah. I feel like there were opportunities you know what, for... Was? Yeah, he was. I think he could have played a little bit more well, reserved, though. But think about when he timed the wave with the mid lane wave to fake yes. out Mickey yes, yes, and yes, instead yes. went for the 1v1. I do not think that he had a bad game. Best I think player that in the game. <laughs> I'm trying, to, right. I'm trying to solve. Uh, uh, the thing about Origin now is that they maintain this performance over next week um, because I think uh, I think it's almost... I'm not going to say for certain, but I don't think they can catch up to fourth. I think right now it is a fight between them and Vitality for fifth and really that sixth place spot of actually staying in playoffs because it's still very competitive given that they will be going up against Rogue uh, next week. But by getting this win today, it definitely increases their chances quite a lot. It definitely does. We're going to hear more from one of the Origin players. In fact, it's their jungler who's standing by with Law. Thank you, guys, and thank you, Cold, for joining me. Not the best circumstances to win a game, I guess, but every game counts from now on. So how do you feel about this one? 
Ooh, I mean, uh, yeah, this this win meant a lot for us. We 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 actually really had to to win today, so I I think all of us felt the pressure a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, we're we're really happy to win, and uh, yeah, it felt good. Do you feel like the pose had an impact on the game you played? Uh, we're gonna try to impact? ignore the guys right now. I don't. I don't really think it had that much of an impact. Uh, we were just a little bit bored, you know. Like when you go into a, in, when you play artists, and we actually were talking about the scenario after, like how we we're gonna play the fight in mid. I don't know if uh, you, if people recall, but yeah. um, so it was a chrono bag, and we just reset and played the game. I felt like we were in control, except for like the the early stages of the game. Um, so uh, I, I, I felt like we had we had control of the game. Yeah. One thing that I found interesting is the sudden shift from yesterday's draft to today's draft, which is more centered around playing around the map, and today more about having strong lanes. So can you explain a bit this? Uh, I mean, that's ki I don't think that's actually how it works, better okay. because uh, yesterday we actually had really strong lanes. Mm -hmm. uh, we just kind of failed to execute the comp. I know afterwards people look at our draft from yesterday and say, like, is it Fnatic playing? Like, what are we actually doing? Uh, but uh, we actually liked the draft yesterday. Uh, we just kind of misplayed the game. Uh, so I t think today we just had the mindset to make it simple, play it, play it out as, as we wanted, as we were like, a more like easier way to play it and mm -hmm. it seemed to work. I was talking to Giluto before the game. I want to have your inputs on that. Still confident about reaching playoffs? I mean, yeah, of course. I think uh, right now we just have like a little bit of uh, uh, some sloppy games on stage that leads us to lose. But I think uh, if you if you get a little bit of insight into how we do things uh, behind the scene in, in practice and stuff, I think we are we are very set to do well in, in playoffs. It's just about getting there now. Really glad to hear that, and I wish you good luck on that. Thank you very Thank much, you. Gold. And back to you guys for post game.